Hello, everyone. My name is Edward McCarver. It is my pleasure to uh, introduce George Vertucci, the keyboard player for Feels Like the First Time, uh, Matt Staz, a bass player for the band, and Aaron Vertucci, the co event producer for the band. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for taking your time out to, to come see us today. I think every band from the Beatles to Jimmy Buffett has, uh, has a tribute band. What made, and I, whoever wants to take this, uh, what made you decide to choose Foreigner? As a band, we started a few years ago and we looked into uh, several different tribute bands that we would cover, bands like Bon Jovi, and eventually we settled on Foreigner because there's not too many Foreigner tribute bands out there at the moment. And we think that we could strive to be the best. Now, your band feels like the first time made their stage debut on uh, St. Patrick's Day at uh, Trinity on Main in New Britain. What was that first performing experience like? And I'll start with you, George, and then, and then Matt, if you want to add to it. For me, it was the culmination of a year and a half of hard work intense practice, a lot of loss of sleep, <laughs> uh, a lot of psychology, talking with <laughs> different members, also a lot of hats being worn. So it was the, the culmination, almost a triumphant uh, feeling for me to step out onto such a beautiful stage at the Trinity Theater after all of that hard work. I felt very privileged. And uh, Matt, and what was... Well, uh, that show was uh, just one of the best nights ever. I mean, George V over here was my music teacher since I was five years old. And to share the stage with him uh, and a group of fantastic uh, seasoned musicians like the band, it's an honor and a pleasure. And I think they all had as much fun as I did. So You bet we did, bro. Oh, yeah. Good. And were you were you producing that night, Aaron? What are, what are your uh, memories of that night? On that night, I'm a stagehand. I, I help the guys make sure everything is set up, loaded, where it's supposed to be. At that show, my biggest thing for me was setting them up, getting them, and being there for them. And then once they played, getting the women onto the stage, <laughs> onto the dance floor. <laughs> <All right. laughs> onto the dance floor. I get the, I get the crowd. I get, I, get them, I get them all out on the dance floor. That must be the fun part of the job. I mean, it's got, it must be easy yeah. to kind of to get them out. Oh, there. he's good at it, too. Oh, he yeah. is he's a good dancer. And he's, uh, <laughs> so he just grabs the women, and drags them out there on the dance floor, and he acts as a catalyst for the band. Nice. So um, nice. it's the little things sometimes, Ed, that mean... The biggest yep. Yep. things, and that's, that's sometimes where... they just need a helping hand. They're they were dancing in their seats, and I just had to bring them to yeah. the floor. A little encouraged, and, nice. and their boyfriends too. I mean, yeah, you know, I just want people to dance and yeah. have a good time. Nice. It doesn't matter if it's men, women, children. Just get out there and have a good time. And I, I'm there to get the crowd. He's going. an audience plant. That's what he is. <laughs> that's <laughs> God, he he <laughs> wears that hat also. <laughs> I wanted to ask uh, the, the musicians. Um, and you could take this first if, if you want, George. I know you're a foreigner tribute band, but, but do, you, do you write your own music? And if you do, what is more difficult, uh, lyrics or melody? Okay, a thought-provoking question <laughs> there. I need, personally, I need the lyric first because I get inspired by what the lyrics are trying to say. Okay. So, and that's a very personal thing. Because some people come down, come up with the music in their head, and then they patch the lyric into it. But I'm not that I'm not that guy. I'm the opposite. I I love the lyric first, so I can read it, reread it, and really get my head and heart into what it's trying to do. And then the music starts to come. And Matt, same thing. Do you do you compose? Well, how do I follow an answer like that? Uh, <laughs> you see, good luck, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm the opposite way. Uh, for me, I need to hear <coughs> what the music sounds like and then pick the right words to go with the emotional state of the song. It's fun, and uh, hearing some of the other band members' songs that they play before practice, it's incredible the musicianship that uh, we could bring to the table, and I can't wait to get there someday with this band. Once again, dude. <laughs> How important is, is social media in getting your music or talent out to the public? In a way, no. <laughs> uh, Between our website and our Facebook page, it's the one true way for our fans to know where we're playing, when we're playing, what we're playing, and uh, everything about us. And uh, 
I think social media brings us one step closer to everybody who wants to potentially listen to us or is already a fan and doesn't want to miss the next show. So uh, it's a vital part of uh, any band to have good social media, good website, and highly active and engaging with all their uh, participants and fans. So on Facebook is just feels like the first time. Type it in the search bar, and we're the pretty blue uh, <laughs> Facebook picture. <laughs> The website, yeah, yep. feel, feels like the first time dot net. As musicians and as a producer, um, on your downtime, do do you listen to other types of music, do you, jazz, hip hop, country? I mean, what does George V do when he wants to unwind and listen to some music at the end of a long day? I'm going to be uh, totally honest with you here on this. George V, since so, Foreigner takes so much of his, his time, my time, and, uh, and then teaching music during the day, that, that's where I listen to all my different types of music is when I'm teaching. That, to me, is my downtime, even though I'm teaching, where I get my other music besides The Foreigner. And then when I walk away from teaching and I walk away from Foreigner, believe it or not, what relaxes me is AM radio, CBS 880. The old, all news. All news. Oh, okay. I'll listen to that for half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour in the car, and I'm ready to go again with the music. Really? Okay. So you need to take a break from the music. I'm different. Music I'm a little so. different, Ed. <laughs> right. I haven't heard 880 AM in a long time. That's good. Uh, Mac? Well, uh, after my practicing every day and uh, rocking out what feels like the first time, I, uh, I listen to some of the heavier metal music, uh, rock and roll always, too. Uh, my dad raised me listening to classic rock like Leonard Skinner, ZZ Top, Jimi Hendrix. So, literally we've heard of them. Anything yeah. is good music. <coughs> that's good music. Yeah. So, uh, my playlist has everything from Mozart to uh, brutal death metal on it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, everything and anything. And Aaron is a, is a producer. Is there when you kind of want to when, when I'm not working for the band and helping the band out, me to unwind. I'm a karaoke guy. I love to go <laughs> to, around to the area karaoke uh, events, and I, I I love to sing. What, I, what's your go-to karaoke song, dude? Uh, it would be Elton John or John Lennon or Billy Joel. Um, that's kind don't of, let the sun go down on me. Oh, one of okay. My yes. Is my yes. one of my favorite songs, uh, "Careless Whisper" by George Michael, uh, "Honesty" by Billy Joel. I, I have a whole range to nice. do. Very good. But uh, that's it. That's it. I do it. It gives me what I need. One of my go-to questions that that I always ask a, a musician when they come on: uh, What's the best advice you you received getting into the business? And what advice would you give someone who would like to be the next feel like the first time or, or be a producer? And George, I'll, I'll start with you. Three words. Practice, practice, and practice. It's just time. There's no secret to it. You just decide that it's something you want and you put aside that time in your life to spend doing it and it gets done. And so it's just, that's the secret. Just put the time aside. If you want to go after anything, whether it be music or, or anything, set that time aside in your life and you will achieve it. And was that the advice you got when you started out? Did... No, I don't, I, I can't remember that far back. I don't know the advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Matt? Well, uh, I could vouch for the practice, practice, practice. Uh, him as my music teacher, he used to tell me every week, keep practicing. But uh, Not that he always listened. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, another good one is uh, to never give up, especially when you're stressed out. Uh, just put it down for a couple minutes and then try it again in a more clear state of mind. And you've had moments like that. I, uh, I think any right musician right. has. So. Okay. Good one. Right. Yep. And Aaron? The question again. Best advice you ever received, and what advice would you give someone who wants to break into the business to do what you do? Well, every day I live life to the fullest. 
and I, I, I try to get, I try to treat people like I want to be treated. I like to give back to the community. That's what got me into this in the beginning. I just, I have, I have a big heart, and I want, I want to help people. And Masters Mana is a great organization, and these guys have a great project going with their band. So if I could be part of that, and I could help an organization like Masters Mana, uh, doing anything good, that's my advice. Anything good is a good thing. Good. Good answer. Wow. Another go-to question I uh, I have here, um, kind of a fantasy question. If if you could perform with any legendary musician, uh, past or present, living or deceased, um, who would you like to share that stage with, and uh, why? No doubt in my mind, not even a hesitation. John Lennon, hands down, my idol. I'm getting goosebumps now just when I say his name, thinking about the possibility that I ever could have shared the stage with him. Um, he's my idol. He's, uh, he's just one of the greatest musicians that, that I believe ever lived and inspired me um, to the point that got me right here in this chair. Nice. Nice. Matt? Oh, there's so many. For me, it's going to have to be uh, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi uh, Hendrix. Nice. Guitar god. And uh, my dad has played me all of his music, and he is a huge part of uh, all my music playlists. And I wish I had the opportunity to see him, but uh, watching his live shows and uh, reliving those moments is still a blast. So I can only imagine what it would be like sharing the stage with him. Nice. And there, I, I don't know if this is appropriate for you. Anybody you'd like to produce with? Or? No, just as far as a musician, who do I idolize the most? I'm on board with my brother, probably because we grew up together and the, the Beatles have been everything to us yeah. our whole lives. And John, John Lennon is the only person that I don't know in life that when he died that, that I cried. You know, I didn't live through John F. Kennedy's assassination and... It was it was a tear to everybody's eyes when the day of the towers came down. But an individual, John Lennon, when he died, he was making a comeback in his career. He came out with his starting over single, and it was then we then we lost him in that way, and it was just. Crushing. Do you remember where you were when you when you heard the news? Yes, I had a broken leg that I had from a car accident, and I was on workman's comp at home watching TV. <laughs> <'Cause> I <heard laughs> that we were working together at the yeah. time, actually, and I was out of work because yeah. I had broke my leg there. I I mean, no, were you around when John Lennon was there? I unfortunately wasn't. Well, yeah. Aaron? Me, I was at my best friend's house in, uh, when I was living in West Haven as a kid, and I remember hearing it over to the radio in, in our bedroom. You know the reason I... I Remember it? It just came to my mind. Uh, Monday Night Football, Howard Cassell announced. Oh yeah, yeah, during yeah. Monday Night Football. Yes, that's that's what I heard about. Yeah. It.